way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. What's the rest of that? Light in the darkness. That is who you are. You ought to get these songs in your soul so that you can sing them throughout the day. All right, so they're just hanging around, doing some stuff. You're singing songs that's powerful, has impact, changes the atmosphere. There's angels around you guys, and they're, they're able to do things that you can't do by yourself. But they're not going to act. They're, un, they're, they're soldiers under authority. So if you say nothing, that's exactly what you get. Nothing. But if you say something powerful and believe something, under the authority of Yeshua, things, incredible things happen. Things that could never happen would happen for you. And they'll say to you first, lucky. You're so stinking lucky. And then over and over and over till they say, man, this can't be lucky. Must be God. Must be something supernatural, something that's never happened before. What's your name? You have a name? Nope. Who knows this kid's, this person's name? Nemo? Nemo. It's like, like the... Like, yeah. <laughs> Nemo. Where are you from? Nowhere? Nowhere? Just born yesterday? Okay. How old are you? It's a secret? Okay. Good, Nemo. Well, well, we'll see if we can find out later. Turn with me to, uh, we'll talk about habits. Habits that make you st strong and great and powerful. Some of you know my story, some of you don't. Um, grew up in South Central L.A. My dad died before I was born. Had an accident at work, a blood clot in his brain. He was gone. My mom was pregnant with me. She had all adopted my older brother and sister, Donna and Margaret, um, from Korea. Um, and before I could get here, obviously my dad had died. So, so I grew up without my father in South Central L.A. Um, in the hood. I mean, it was Crip, Prim, Pyru, all the, all the games. You can, they, they were in that kind of environment. But my father it was with me, not my natural father, my heavenly father. And so the Lord would walk me to school, walk me home. I grew up like a block and a half from the Black Panther Party headquarters. They, they firebombed. Um, you know, here's what it is. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel any fear and uncertainty. Oh, my God, I'm not going to make it. No, I was going to make it. No one else makes it. You ought to say, I'm going to make it. No one else can get there. You should say, I'm going to get there, right? Because you walk with God. So, you know, I walked to school and walked home. My mom didn't, didn't take me, didn't drive me off. Um, I was in a Catholic school, so I uh, went to Mass and in Latin. I went to Mass when the Mass was in Latin, Jack. I don't know any Latin. But I knew what to do. I knew when to when the genuflect, when to, you know, when to hand out stuff. I knew I knew the routine, right? So I just started walking with God. And he started walking with me. So and then I went from there to a Loyola High School, a Jesuit college prep high, and did pretty well there and played played football, ran track, and studied and um started doing well in that event, in that atmosphere. Got got good. I didn't realize I was that good till uh, till later on. Um, then I, then, uh, you know, I left and went to, uh, went to Stanford, got in a, uh, scholarship to Stanford University. Um, I, mean, I got in every place. I got into UW, and got into, uh, West Point which is a military academy on the, on the East Coast, got into there, and any place I wanted to go. Um, and just because I walk with God, I'm just telling you, God opened doors for me. I wasn't the bigger, wasn't the strongest, wasn't the fastest. I was the best looking and the smartest, but other than that. 
So I just, I got open doors, man. And so I went on and then, then my, uh, after a couple of years, I started really like I, I was pretty good and, and left Stanford, graduated from Stanford, and then went to the, the New Orleans Aints. My rookie year in the, in the NFL was with the New Orleans Saints. And, and that year we were 1-15. in 15. We were 1-15. in 15. And uh, we couldn't beat the Sisters of St. Mary's. I'm telling you, our team was bad, Jack. It was bad. So, hey. What do you do? You're still getting paid, so you play as hard as you can. And then after a couple of years, I, I, the USFL came out, and I joined the Oakland Invaders and became a star in that league. And, man, made a lot of – made some money and finished up. And um, then that league was coming to an end, and I had a guy fly down to California, a scout, and said – met me at the um, – Sheraton Hotel by DFW by LAX Airport and and he was a scout with the Cowboys. Now, I didn't like Cowboys. I was not a Cowboy fan at all. I mean, but he uh, he convinced me to sign with the Cowboys. So you know, I did. I signed a contract. I looked at the number of zeros that he was was on the contract and said, "Hey, well." <laughs> so I joined the Cowboys. and went there in my first practice week of practice, and we had a good game and. You know, that Tuesday, as we were in the, in the training camp, um, one of the trainers said, hey, hey, Gordon, would you, you know, would you like to get your check? I said, what? Check? Where, who's got it? He said, I got it. Come on, I got the checks. We have every Tuesday on after workout, you guys want to get paid on payday. You get by here, I'll hand you a check, you sign it out. So I signed in my deal and took the check and just flipped it in my bag and went out to my car, got in the car and was driving to the to the, my little apartment where I was staying, and I reached out, grabbed a bag, and opened up that check and pulled that check out of that envelope and said, "How about them cowboys?" <laughs> Ended up playing seven years in the National Football League. Uh, had fun, then got a real job. Then as I'm working, and God says uh, to me, "I got a work for you to do." I want you to be the youth pastor at Covenant Church. And I said to the Lord, oh, no, 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 no. I don't like kids, and they don't like me, so hello. But um, I said yes. Stepped into that. Mary Derzette, um And but when, I, when I met Derizette, we started dating and getting a little serious. She said, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I had ovarian cancer when I was young, and um, it was aggressive. It was so aggressive, I shouldn't have survived it, but I did. And they did an operation. They only have one ovary. They took one. It was damaged, and they, I have one. But they're saying it's damaged and never be able to have children. So we're sitting in her apartment. I'm in her house, her mom's house, and I say to her, girl, I saw you in a vision in the seventh grade. When I was in the seventh grade, I was walking to school uh, down Main Street, going to, to my high school and, or to my elementary school, and I said to the Lord, who would marry a ghetto kid like me? I didn't think I was that, I wasn't special, I wasn't powerful, had no special gift or unique uh, um, ability, and I saw a young girl about Bella's age in a vision, right, right in as I'm right across the street from Taco Tio. It's to the left. A liquor store is right across the street in front of me, and a donut stand. And I had this vision of this woman, young girl, probably in her 20s, and um, I was like, man, she's fine. <laughs> Go ahead, God, with your bad self. <laughs> I high five the Lord right from right there. Boom, we give it up. So, um, but you're not getting married in eighth grade. You know, you're just going to school. So I just went on to class and forgot about it. Uh, then now we're fast forward. I'm finished my career. I'm playing. I'm in, I'm in my career. I'm playing. And, 
And I thanked the Lord. We had a nice girl. I hope we become friends. And she said, he says to me, that's the one I showed you when you were in the seventh grade. I was like, wow. It was her. So I, I got serious. I cut off everything. I wasn't spending 50 cents or five minutes on anybody else because God had already shown me who I was going to marry. Uh, so now she tells me, hey, I had ovarian cancer. I may never be able to have children. Uh, you need to know that. And so you guys know we have children, Danielle, Joshua, Joseph, and Judah, and Jeremiah. You know, and so here's, here's the deal with that. God is a supernatural God. He's not my supernatural God. He's your supernatural God. But if you, if you don't ask for anything, you know what you get? What you ask for. What you ask for. If you don't ask for anything. You ask for nothing. You get, you get what? Yeah, you get what you ask for. You get what you ask for. I'm telling you, some of you guys don't have, you don't have much because you don't even ask for much. You're trying to get through the day. I want you to get through the day. Let's get through the day with, with some pomp and circumstance. Let's be grand. Let's be powerful. If we're going to win, why don't, we, why don't you win? Why don't you win? If somebody's going to win, why not you? Somebody's going to get a million dollars, why don't, why don't you get it? You're good. You're good with that? Right on with that. Make it so, Lord. So that's what I'm saying. Let's, if we, somebody's got to win, might as, well be, might as well be you, right? Might as well be you. Why not you? The God that you serve, the God that brought you here, the God that walked you into this atmosphere is with you right now, and he's with you all the time. Whether you know him or not or access it or not is up to you. I'm, I'm here to encourage you to access it. Why don't you do something great with God? And then so I left, I left high school and went on to college. I went to college and played pro ball. And, and then God made a decision I was coming here. So I said, yes, Lord. I'm going to give you a couple of just basic life habits. Life habits, I think, that are important for you to, uh, to take your life to the next level. When you come into this environment from now on, you come in here with a, a notepad a pen, so you could write things down. Good job. Give me that. Give me that. All right? Come in here with a notepad, a pen, something you could write something down with. Okay, I got five minutes. Go get it. Go get it. We're not going on until we get notepads and pens, some activity, something that you could write some stuff down. Some of you leaders, get them a notepad, get some pens, Get some resources in their hands. I'm just going to walk you through some basics, life habits, but they're important. And you should um, make a plan of start functioning according to these life habits. Here's number one. Read the word every day. Here's number one is read the word. Read the word every day. Read the word. Get in the word till the word gets in you. God's promises are sure, fixed, firm. Listen. S establish, settle. Once you know them, they become tools that you operate and overcome with. You can wear a champion shirt because you're a champion. Right? You're a champion? Yeah, that's right. I'm just telling you what. Start writing, reading the principles of the kingdom of God. 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker or workman who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. Get up in the morning, spend some time getting into the word of God. Read it. It's living, right? Now, I like this rock. This rock's in my pocket. It's been, I picked it up earlier today. It goes wherever I place it because it's not living. But the Word of God is alive. It has the power to do go inside your body and change you, inside your atmosphere and change you, inside your school and change you, inside 
give you money you don't currently have, give you opportunity and resources and favor. That's just crazy good. It's living. Something that's not living is static. It doesn't move, but it's living. In order for you to be living, you need living things around you. This is water, H2O. Is it living or is it dead? Huh? Yeah, it's living. It's living water. So you, you can't survive without it because your body is water. So you don't have, if you don't have enough water, what do they, what do they term it? What do they say about you? Yeah, you die, but you die because of what? Dehydration. You don't have hydration. You're not hydrated. So if you're not hydrated with this stuff, H2O, you can't live. And you're much more valuable than water. But if, but if you don't have something living inside of you, you can't live. So, so you should live. You should get something spiritual inside of you, which is the word of God, so that you spiritually are strong and powerful. God opens doors and makes things happen, makes your name great, gives you great favor. And at first, when they see the favor of God on you, they're going to say, what's your name? Landon. Man, Landon's lucky. He's lucky Landon. Lucky. You lucky Landon. And then he overcomes again and go, golly, he's lucky. He's really lucky. Then he overcomes again and go, man, he's, did you see hear about Landon? Man, that dude, you know, then, he's, then he wins again. And then guys start saying, forget Lucky Landon. I'm with Landon. I'm getting an agreement with Landon because this guy is going someplace great, and I want to be lucky or have the favor that ha that's, that's alive in Landon. You ought to be saying it about you. If God's going to do that for Landon, why not do that for me? Why not me? Why not be God? Well, Landon reads the word. 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself as, to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. You got you to read it, get in the word, so that the word gets in you. So I began to understand the promises of God and what they were, the ones that were for me, so I, I got my life in agreement with those things. So I stopped doing some things. I stopped, I pushed back some things of foolishness and behaviors, words that were coming out of my mouth that were counter to the desire of God. I got rid of those. I stopped doing that. All right. You know, I had, when I was a kid, I, I sold programs at the Coliseum, the LA Coliseum at the Rams games. And I was a smart kid, uh, me and my brother, and he worked there as well. And, and the program was about as, about as big as this iPad. And, and I realized as, as things are going on that, that the people who were coming into, that, into the football stadium, they had paid money to, to, for those tickets. And, they were, and I was selling programs, and, and they, they needed programs, but they liked – I did much better – when I was up front and I was a kid that, that looked like a kid. So I stopped trying to be grown up and I started being, hello, programs, get your programs here. Get your souvenir program. Would you like a program, sir? And, and I started making money because people start standing in line to get a program from that kid that was a cute, well-dressed, well-mannered, ordered kid. They weren't buying them from these other guys. They were going past them. And so, so I was getting bankrolled. I was like, dang, I like this. And when you're like in the fifth grade and you got money, you don't know, you even know what you're spending it on, right? Mostly my brother would take it, but other than that. I'm just saying, start walking with God, and he makes adjustments along the way. Read the word. It's living, and it gets inside of you. It'll change you. It'll change your atmosphere. It'll change your operations. 
you'll be able to speak some things into existence that you're not able to speak now. Read the Word. Gives you access to things you don't have access to. Read the Word. Read the Word. Jesus got up early in the morning, left the house, went to solitary places where he prayed. Because he prayed, he always won. Read the Word. Number two, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Somebody read that for me. <coughs> Mark 1, 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up, went out, and he made his way to a deserted place, and there he was praying. Simon and his companions searched for him. And when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. So one of the things Jesus is doing, he's getting up early in the morning. Everybody else is still dark. He's getting up early. He draws off to a deserted place. There he's praying. Why? Because he's getting instructions. He's getting instructions. He's getting downloads. Some of you don't have the, some of the victories that you want to have because you're not getting the download. Get your download. Let Father talk to you. He loves you. He's for you. He'll open up doors that have never been opened for you before. He'll do great things in your family, in your friends, even your crazy friends. Nobody, no one like him. But he didn't get this by sleeping in. He got it by getting up, going out to a place where he was alone, got into the presence of, King, of, of the Father God, and King Jesus grew. I'm just saying you got to grow, man. Not enough. Get up. Get up. Don't sleep in. Get up. If you're going to get up in the morning, you got to go to sleep at night. Get up. Get the important things in first. Eat your Cheerios, man, your spiritual Cheerios. You know, get up in the morning, get in that word, get that food in. Get that food in my body, in my spirit, man. Get strong. I get crazy strong. So then when something comes against you, it's nothing. Overwhelm somebody else doesn't overwhelm you. It's nothing to you. Why? Because the Lord's with you. Because you've been in the Word. And you know God's Word, got His way. And you know how to pray. And in your prayer, God responds. Read. Pray. I'll give you a third one. Give. Read. Get, read the word. Get the word in you. Pray. Speak the word of God. Come on, declare certain things to be true. Give. Who wants to read? Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature, able also to control the whole body. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature, able also to control the whole body. In many ways, if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is mature, able also to control the whole body. Now if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we direct their whole bodies. And consider ships, though, though very large and driven by fierce winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So too, though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts great things. Consider how a small fire sets ablaze a large forest. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It stains the whole body and sets the course of life on fire. 
<laughs> and it's and it is itself set on fire by hell. Every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and fish is tamed and has been tamed by humankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweetness and a bitter and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives, my brothers and sisters, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a saltwater spring yield fresh water. So the king gave orders to summon the magicians, mediums, sorcerers, and childines to tell the king his dreams. When they came and stood before the king, he said to them, I, I have had a dream, and I am anxious to understand it. The Chaldeans spoke to the king. Aromatic begins here. May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give interpretation. The king replied to the Chaldeans, My word is final. If you don't tell me the dream and its interpretation, you will be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be made a garage dump. But if you make the dream and its inter interpretation known to me, you'll receive gifts, a reward, and great honor from me. So make the dream and its interpretation known to me. They answered a second time, May the king tell the dream to his servants, and we will make known the interpretation. The king replied, I know for certain you are trying to gain some time because you see that my word is final. If you don't tell me the dream, there is one decree for you. You have conspired to tell me something false or fraudulent until the situation changes. So tell me the dream, and I will know you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered from the king, No one on earth can make known what the king requests. Consequently, no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked anything like this or of any magician, medium, or Chaldean. What the king is asking is so difficult that no one can make it known to him except the gods, whose dwelling is not with mortals. Because of this, the king became violently angry and gave orders to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Babylon. The decree was issued that the wise men were to be executed, and they searched for Daniel and his friends to execute them. Then Daniel responded with tact and decreation to Erech, the captain of king's guard who has gone out to execute the wise men of Babylon. He asked Erech, the king's officer, why is the decree from the king so harsh? Then Erech explained the situation to Daniel. So Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so that he could give the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and told his friends Hananiah, Hananiah Mishael, and Azariah about the matter. Urging them to ask the God of heavens for mercy concerning this mystery, so Daniel and his friends would not be destroyed with the rest of Babylon's wise men. The mystery was then revealed to Daniel in a vision at night, and Daniel praised the God of the heavens and declared, May the name of God be praised forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and light.